Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to today's lecture. So, in the last two lectures, we had briefly discussed about random variables and we had introduced upon the concept of expectation. Okay. So, I will begin by briefly recapping whatever we had discussed with respect to random variables. So, a random variable okay, can be discrete. continuous okay for random variable you can determine something or define something called a cumulative distribution distribution function okay it's typically written as f of x okay so f of x is probability of x less or equal to a value x. Okay. And so, using this we can calculate probability in, in a regime, let us say for example, this is nothing but f of b minus f of a. Okay. For a discrete random variable r v, so I will put r v in short, okay. you can define a probability mass function. Which is nothing but p of a is given by probability of x equal to a. Okay. But for a continuous random variable, probability of x equal to a is always 0. Why is this? Because for a continuous random variable, you have a concept of a probability density function. as f of x. Okay. So, your probability of x in an interval b is defined as integral of f x dx over that interval. Okay. So, this would mean, so this would mean that probability of a is integral of a to b f x dx. So, probability of x equal to a would amount to a to a f x d x and this is nothing but 0, okay, because you have the same interval. Okay. So, let us take a pretty you know simple example. So, let us define f x as c e to the power minus x okay, between 0 to okay, and equal to 0 otherwise. How do we calculate f of x or how do we calculate the constant? So, we use the identity that between minus infinity and plus infinity, this integral was written me a value of 1. Okay. So, I can use this expression. So, this amounts to z c is equal to 1. Okay. I can take it out. So, this comes to be So, this I can simplify as c 0 is 1 minus minus 2 okay, equal to 1. So, implying c is, is equal to okay, okay. So, you have constant as e square by e square plus 1. Okay. We then introduce the concept of expectation. Okay. And your expectation is nothing but simply the mean of the population or mean of the sample. Okay. So, how
how can we make use of the concept of expectation. Let us discuss, discuss few simple examples. Okay. So, imagine you know you are waiting in your room for a letter to arrive okay. and the waiting time. So, x is the waiting time. So, you want to wait. So, you are expecting the letter to arrive at 5 p, okay. but you have to wait and the waiting time is a random variable x which is continuous and which is defined as follows. Okay. It follows the probability distribution f of x given by So, the waiting time x is a continuous distribution, continuous random variable which follows with the probability distribution as follows. Okay. So, you want you ideally expect the you know the envelope or whatever you are waiting for to arrive at 5 p m. Now, how long will you on an average how much do you have to wait that is the question. Okay. So, how do you do this? This is nothing but, so when you say what is an average expected wait time it is nothing but the expectation x and this I can write as 0 to 2 half into x into d x. Okay. So, half is your p x, this is your f x. So, x f x d x is nothing but the expectation. So, either way for x cannot be less than 0. So, you can you can integrate from 0 to 2 and 2 to infinity. Here your f of x is nothing but 0, okay. x d x, this f x is 0. So, essentially this thing is 0. So, you have to integrate from 0 to 2 half d x okay, equal to half into x square square by 2 0 to 2. Okay, two square, no. So, this will return your value of 1, which means that if this was the your distribution for waiting time, on an average you will have to wait for 1 hour to receive your mail. Okay. So, let us now do some basic algebra with expectations. So, imagine you have this random variable x and you have another variable y which is defined as a of x. Okay. What is going to be the value of e y? Okay. So, this assumes that the probability for a given x, the probability underlying probability density function is the same. Okay. So, I can write e of y if, if this was a continuous variable, let us say e of y is simply integral a into so a x into p of x f of x d x. Okay. So, this I can take the a out. So, let us say I can write minus infinity to infinity okay. x f x d x. Okay. Now, what is this? This is nothing but expectation of x. Okay. So, I will have e of y is a e of x. So, this is similar. So, you remember from uh, long back we had done this basic transformation. If you define y is equal to a of x, what is y bar is equal to a x bar and this is nothing but the exact same equation because expectation of y is simply y bar. Okay. So, this is the same equation. So, we can use the similarity concept and then ask what is e of a constant c? e of a constant c is nothing but the c. So, if your variable is always constant, then on an average you always expect the constant value. Okay. So, we can generalize this and say a of x plus b is equal to a e of x plus b. Okay. We can extend this. So, let us do a simple example. Let us say that x is a variable okay, which has discrete random variable. So, let us say discrete r v which takes on values of 0, 1 and 2 with probabilities 0 0.2, half and 0 0.3. Okay. So, I can calculate the value of expectation of x this as simple equal to 0 into 0 0.2 plus 1 into half plus 2 into 0 0.3. Okay. And on average I have 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5 is 1.1. So, if I define a value y, uh, let us say 2 f x, y is equal to 2 f x, then e of y is simply going to be 2.2. If I define y is 2 x plus 1, then e of y is going to be 3.2. Okay. 
so on and so forth. So now, let us say you have different random variables x 1, x 2, so on and so forth and these are independent okay? and I can think of a random variable called x is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus dot 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 plus x n. Okay? So what will be my expectation of x? Okay? Expectation of x will come out to be summation E of x i. So, let us take a very simple example. So, imagine, okay, imagine the office clerk okay, has to put n letters in n envelopes, n exact envelopes. Okay. So, by mistake, so, when we say in n letters in n exact envelopes, so every letter should ideally be in one particular envelope. Okay. So, the office clerk makes a mistake and randomly mixes it. Mixes the letters and puts them In random envelopes. Okay. So, how many? Okay. How many envelopes will contain the right letter? This is the question. So, how do we do it? So, you have n letters and in n exact envelopes okay, to be put. Let us say we define x i, x i is a random variable okay, which can take in two values 1 and 0. 1 if correct letter is there, okay, and 0 otherwise. So, if you have n letters and n envelopes, what is the chance, what is the chance that you will put the correct letter, if you randomly take, okay, if you choose one letter from n letters and you put it in one envelope, what is the chance that that envelope will have the correct letter? There is only one possibility out of total of, so you can drag out one out of n envelopes in n different ways. Okay. So, your expectation of x i okay, is nothing but Okay, one into probability of that is one by n. Okay, x into the probability is one by n as we calculated. Plus for all other cases it is zero. Okay, because the x i is zero and you you know so your x value is zero and your probability can be anything. Okay, so for all of them is also one by n. Okay, so this is nothing but one by n. Okay, so this is that the first the expected expectation that the first envelope is in the first letter is in first envelope. Okay. So, my total expectation then is similarly the summation of E x i n times right 1 by n plus 1 by n n times. What is the value then 1 by n into n is simply equal to 1. Okay. So, it means that on an average okay, on an average only one letter will be in its correct envelope. Okay. Let's take another letter. Okay. So, we can generalize. So, you have x and you can have expectation of x. You have x plus y, your expectation of z. So, let us say if you define z is x plus y, e of z is simply e of x plus e of y. You can define a problem as a variable z as g of x. In that case, e of z is simply is equal to is e of g of x, right? And what is expectation of g of x? It turns out to be integration over minus infinity to infinity g x into 
whatever the probability distribution you had okay g x into f x into d x okay so let us take one simple example of you know how you can calculate expectation of a function so let us say in a plant okay in a power plant okay so when there is a fault okay so fault or breakdown it takes x amount of time okay x amount of time to fix the fault okay so and this x so x is a random variable continuous random variable it follows the following probability distribution this is the probability distribution. Now, you have let us say, so there is a cost associated with one particular with this breakdown. The cost of breakdown is x cubed. Okay. So, the question is what is the average cost of breakdown? what is the average cost of breakdown. What will you do? So, essentially you have a function g of x which is x cubed okay, and this is the corresponding probability distribution. So, essentially we are expected we want to find out expectation of x cubed which is nothing but 0 to 1 x cubed into 1 into d x. Why we add only the limit 0 to 1? Because this is the only place where your probability distribution with p d f has some value. So, this is nothing but 1 fourth. Okay. So, this is how you can you know define new functions and if the underlying probability distribution is the same, you can find out the expectation of this new function which is derived from other random variables. Okay. So, in expectation, so you have let us say a random variable x. Okay. We want to know, okay, we want to know what is the best descriptor best predictor that x, what is the prediction that x will have a value of c. Okay. What is the value of c which best predicts x. Okay. So, in a sense okay, we want to compute okay, the best predictor of x, what should we do? We should minimize the difference between the value of x and the prediction. Okay. In other words, you want to minimize x minus c whole square. So, the best predictor is what will give you the lowest of expected value for x minus c whole square. Okay. So, I can write down this e of x minus c whole square, I can expand that. I can write it as expectation of C plus. So, I can expand them laterally. Okay. Plus. expectation of. Okay. I have the following expression. Now, what is the value of expectation of x minus mu? Okay. What is the value of expectation of x minus mu? Okay. Expectation of x minus mu is equal to expectation of x minus expectation of mu. Okay. What is expectation of x? It is mu. What is expectation of mu? Mu is a constant. So, expectation of mu is equal to mu. So, expectation of x minus 0, x minus mu is simply equal to 0. Okay. So, we can write this expression okay. we can modify this expression 
plus okay so your expectation of x minus c whole square is expectation of x minus mu whole square plus expectation of mu minus c whole square so since so i can write this so expectation of mu minus c whole square is so this is i can further simplify plus okay so expectation this is a constant so expectation of this constant is simply that value okay and mu minus c whole square is a square so that means that this is always positive okay so i can write x minus expectation of x minus c whole square is always greater or equal to x minus mu whole square expectation of x minus so this means that my mu is the best description okay this is why the average is taken such a standard metric for defining for for defining the population or the sample okay so while we have defined this we can also define x variance okay we def variance okay this is defined as expectation of okay so variance is nothing but expectation of x minus mu whole square okay so i can expand this expectation of x is simply equal to mu and expectation of mu square is simply equal to mu square okay so this gives me so you have minus 2 mu square term and a plus mu square term so this will give you a minus mu square term so variance of x okay so this is the final expression for variance of x expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square okay so let's say for the die roll you have x values of okay z 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and you have probability all of 1 by 6 okay so what is my variance so for calculating my expectation of x so we have x p x and x square p of x okay so x p x is 1 dot 1 by 6 dot dot, dot 6 dot 5 by 6 and we had calculated so expectation of x we had already calculated before it turned out to be 7 by 2 okay let us calculate the value of x square p x it is 1 square dot 1 by 6 like this 6 square dot 1 by 6 so your e of x square is summation x square p x okay plus 4 square plus 5 square plus 6 square okay is 1 by 6 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 but 1 by 6 okay 14 30 30 66 25 91 okay so your variance of x will turn out to be okay 91 by 6 minus e x is 7 by 2 minus 49 by 4 okay so you can simplify this and calculate the final value of variance okay 
So, just so we have the following simplifications, right. So, E of A x is equal to A E of x, okay. What about variance of A x? Okay. Variance of A x is nothing, but you will turn out. So, let us see it is expectation. This expectation of a into x minus mu whole square, okay, a square, okay. So variance of a x, okay, is equal to expectation of x mu minus, okay. So you can take out the a square term, okay. Variance of a x is going to be a square variance of x, okay. Okay. Variance of a constant is equal to going to be zero. So, you can also write down the expansion for variance of x plus y. So, this is a little bit tricky, but you will see that in the most general case, it will come out to be variance of x plus variance of y okay, plus okay, 2 times covariance of x comma y, where covariance of x comma y. So, we have cov of x comma y is defined as the covariance. is expectation of x minus mu x into y minus mu y. Okay. We will stop here for today and in the next class we will briefly discuss about covariance and then we will start discussing about three important random variables which are relevant to statistics. Okay. With that I thank you for your attention and look forward to next class.